or five minute delay setup. Uh, that's counting down. <laughs> uh, welcome everyone. We are here today with uh, Crass as my co-caster. We are uh, doing the EMP vs. RJF Div A Blood Leagues. This should be a good one today. Um, the map is Frozen City Night. Uh, and I'm expecting... I'm expecting a, a brawl rush from one of these teams, to be honest. It's the, this, this map is easy to rush on. It's also a decent trade map. Yes. I got the map pulled up. Um, most of the fights I've seen on this map in all the seasons I've played in, which isn't a terrible lot, but it's I usually the fight I usually see a fight in C4 to be honest, like right here. That's, um, my favorite strats. Or, ca or cave strats, you know, like you don't see them very often, but I have seen a couple times where you get a couple of really fast mechs just to run through the cave, or you do a whole rush through the cave just to do some surprise butt sex. Oh, so they're taking everything. Uh, G2G, I'm assuming, g good to go? Is that their way of saying locked? That's true. This one is one assault. Now, since... I'm hoping Spirit Bear. I don't think it will be, but... That's very true. All right. Ah. I hate the commando. <laughs> like, I love it, but I hate it at the same time. It's just, it's wildly too tanky for 25 tons. <laughs>
Um, over here on RJF, we have a Vulcan, Cyclops, K9, Wolfhound, Summoner, Night Gear, and a Veagle. Uh, it looks a bit on the tradey side with some MPLs. Double, double checking what's on this slot there. Yep. Uh, RJF's Silith and that Vulcan just barely missed seeing each other. Oh, there they go. A little bit of a, a little bit of a skirmish happening at the drop dropship right now. Ooh, Firestar is get, getting hit by PPCs from the summoner. <laughs> uh, Night Gear is uh, PPCs and lasers. Uh, it looks like he's trying to trade with. Uh, the Black Lantern, Black Lantern is running off. Oh, wait. Uh, it looks like EMP has four mechs rolling up this uh, right side. Uh, it looks like... <laughs> Firestar is about to take the Theta and force the three cap. Summoner's over here just doing it uh slave labor doing some trading from the from the drop ship. Looks like there's some UAVs up. They're just now starting to get plucked down. Vulcan going for Theta. Yeah, there's two mechs that could pass him. Scarecrow and Firestarter seems to have scared the Vulcan off. He is uh, pulling back to the rest of the team. Yeah, for sure. Summoner Slave Labor is starting to take a lot of damage. Night Gear's get. Uh, yeah, Night Gear is uh, one touch from the uh, rear CT almost. Yeah, we got a five stars. Vulcan goes down. Slepnir is about to face tank this Black Lantern. Let's see if he can pick him. Now he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Stormcrow, but, uh... <laughs> Summoner's getting into cover. Kind of hoping the uh, that K9 could have picked off one or two of these super damage mechs. Oh, actually. Yeah, they're not as damaged as uh, they seem to first ground.
Yeah. All right. Kind of published. Let's see if uh, let's take a look at the damage numbers here. Um, Chimera Annie with five twenty five. That's no surprise. He, he seemed to got had good lines on most of RJF for a lot of that fight. Uh, how much team damage? That's 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 the most important thing. Uh, Ava Zofsky slept near with sixteen team damage. Not enough, guys. Come on, we gotta see more team damage than that. With Chimera being second place with nine, <laughs> you must have scraped somebody in the butt. Um, yeah. Isn't that what all of, all of our viewers want to see is the danger close strikes? <laughs> the war crimes. Huh, my tour map seems to have big green circle in it. Hmm. Is it a volume issue? I could hear you. Uh, I'm being told in DMs that no one else can hear you. Yeah, let me get you turned up. Maybe that's the issue. All right. Uh, give me a mic test. All right, maybe that 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 does it. Uh, double your volume. Let's see how that works out. Yeah. Should be better now. Well, we'll know here in a few minutes. Um, they're not running currently, uh, or at least I have my in-game turned down pretty low. All right, that should help. Oh, looks like Noble Rat is discoed. Let's 
Streamlabs OBS. Alright, yeah, the settings should be fixed. Just double check the stream myself. Yeah, there is no sounds other than my voice. <laughs> Team 1 is locked. Yeah, um, Night Gear has been a very common one uh, this season, probably because of the uh, mobility enhancements. Oh, it was kind of common in previous seasons too, but it seems it's become the go-to. For a lot of teams. For uh, heavy mech DACA. Oh, I can't wait for that patch. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Is that when Polar's coming too? Big patches. Wow. <laughs> All right. For RGF, we got a Wolfhound, Timberwolf, Gargoyle, Vulcan, or Vigil, uh, Marauder 2C8, uh, yeah, and a Vulcan and a K9. Uh, I haven't seen Marauder 2C8 in a while. Uh, the Vulcan, I know Bowser's there, he's going to get a backdrop. Do you know? 
I don't know if they know he's there. Uh, he doesn't know either. Oh, <laughs> interesting. I think he's just figured it out. Uh, he's he's gotta be careful. Yeah. Kill one of them, but not all Looks like he's decided the canines is the first target he's gonna focus. Dan Airwalker has oversights too. Wow, Bowser getting away with one assault versus three for versus a whole wolf pack. With a little help from Din Air, some Overwatch. Oh, Gargoyle's pushing in. So Marauder 2 C is getting hurt really bad. Oh, Flamer Commander getting to the butt of the Gargoyle. Gargoyle goes down. I'm pretty sure this Marauder is about to drop right alongside him. Damn. Oh man, at this rate, I don't think EMP is going to lose a single mech. Yeah, there it goes. It would have been pretty great if those lights saw Bowser up there sooner and maybe backstabbed him before he noticed them. <laughs> yeah, the strength of execution isn't going away. It's over. GG's both teams. Yeah, and Slave Labor saying fucking map shot. He has obviously not tested it because he realized that the team to the uh Alpha Link and now Charlie Link. Oh yeah. Uh we in scrims we got hurt by that too, caught completely off guard. <laughs> uh, we forgot the uh the tweaks. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure why. Uh, I figured that much out. Um Yep, and we got a next map solar center. We gotta uh, swap the teams. Um, while you do that, I going to figure out why no audio is coming through. Have you looked at the actual audio input on OBS levels? Yes. And I just solved it. Officially. I actually solved it this time, guys. Uh, Why? What was wrong with it? For so It, it was defaulting to um, a different input for, uh, for some reason. Or instead of using my speakers, it was trying to use my monitor monitor's output instead of my headphones. You ever use your monitor's output? No. I wish I could just, like, stick something in there and disable it permanently, because my computer's always trying to use it. 
You can do that, though. Just go Google how to do it. You can just permanently disable it, basically. All right. The, the audio for your monitor. So I've done the same thing for mine. Same with my webcam. Like, the webcam has a really bad microphone attached to it. Okay, anyway, no one could really hear my comments I was making in the last match, no. but essentially RJF did a push that was very reminiscent of the push that SJR did against Eon in the semifinals of the, I believe it was the 2017 World Championship, and the same result happened. Um, RJF just got shot up from all sides and died quite easily. There was, Slave Labor mentioned, there was a bit of a problem. RJF didn't realize that Charlie Lance and Alpha Lance in this map have been switched as who, of a few patches ago. Who runs the MWO map room uh, site? Because they got the map, can't... The map that website, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's a guy. He's on, he's on MWO League Discord. Nice. Because yeah, uh, I noticed they got ca he he got Canyon fixed sometime last week. I think it was, which is pretty cool. Yeah, most of the time we just submit the new stuff and he just updates it. Who is it again? And there's a few people on here. Is it Red Imp maybe, or is Red Imp? He might run the API website from Thirty One HR. Hmm. There's a few people around that run the different, the various different websites. Pretty much all of them run MWO Comp. The guy who runs Mech Database is here. Currently waiting. RGF look like they're trying to organize themselves. So it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I'm presuming it's going to be, you know, pretty heavy hitting mechs considering it's Solaris City, but there are a few different ways you can go about it. So you can go, you know, heavy, heavy Ultra Dakar, you could go LBX, you could go heavy Gorse. I've seen that before. Even something like an Atlas is honestly viable these days in this map. Yeah. With the improved agility it has. Um, I well, I I think it was ISC. We saw a lot of fighting around Epsies, but with this being a five cap, I expect kind of like quick play and pre and worlds and stuff to see. Uh, you know, Bex around this whole the, or just around the outside of Theta, fighting along lines or something. There is a possibility for a cap strut as well. So you can put mechs up high and then do some back capping. It takes, if you run your commando or your flea or locust or whatever it may be, yeah. to the enemy team's back cap, it does take quite a while for the enemy team to respond. There can also be some inter interesting plays around theta when you put mechs with ECM or stealth armor up high. They're very, very difficult to see in certain positions because of the darkness, the lack of lighting in the top of those <laughs> platforms around Theta. Yeah. Uh... We've got full Bravo Charlie lock, 430 tons for RJF. So this one's missing a medium. Which um... means the max tonnage is 475 tons, so they're running quite a bit of tonnage under, 45 tons under. Yeah, that's a whole mech under. <laughs> you think they're going to try to do a... kind of try to do a push again, or you think they'll try to kite this time with faster, lighter mechs? Not sure. I mean, the thing about this map is 
you don't often want to be the team to push. There's a lot of very defensible positions and choke points you can hold. Um, so it does make pushing on this map quite difficult, if not done extremely well. So I'm hoping that RJF have, have a more kiting, cap strat type of thing going on, but we'll have to see. MP organizing stuff, they've only got six people in at the moment, but they do have 400 tons on the board, provided they don't change. Yeah, I'm really interested. Uh, unfortunately, I've not seen a lot of games of, with the MP on this map, so I have no idea the kind of stuff that they get up to on here. Four seventy tons, so they're almost max tonnage. They're five tons under. Come on, Atlas! I want to see an Atlas. All right, looks like away we go. So, waiting for the drop ships to come in. There's the music. Okay, right. from EMP we have a Black Lena, an Annihilator, a Fire Starter, a Summoner, a Night Gear, a Kodiak, and a Jenna. Over here on RJF, we got a Phoenix Hog, uh, Irby K9, uh, Bounty Hunter, Marauder Bounty Hunter, Executioner, Night Gear, Flea, and Blood Asp. Okay, so we got an Ultra 10 Summoner from Bowser. We have Chimera and a 3 AC 10, 1 Ultra 5, 1 Light PPC Annihilator. Lizzie's in the 2 hour PPC, 4 AC 10 Kodiak. McGoat is in a laser vomit night gear, four large pulse, three ER medium lasers. We've got the faster elements of EMP making a move on Theta. We've got an eight small pulse fire starter from Dered. We have Stimrog's Jenna, which is yet yeah, six SRM6, looking for a big back shot. And we've got Saleth in the small pulse micro laser Black Lena, which interestingly enough has an AMS. Uh, RJF sent enemy. all three of their fast movers to Epsys. We have gained mm -hmm. Epsilon. Where there's four. Where EMP's uh, big boys are heading, actually. Interesting. Ultra, Ultra 20, Ultra 10, Blood Asp. A Laser Vomit Executioner. Snub AC 20, Bounty Hunter. Oh, we got a little action here. Uh, Firestarter just ran into the Flea and the Phoenix Hawk over here in Epsys. A little bit of trading happened. Everyone pulled off. But here we go. Uh, the Black Lantern it just ran forward. I thought all three were about to YOLO forward, but... Uh, kind of Arjaffa. rotating. Arjaffa running away from that engagement. Their, their, their Flea has only got four medium lasers. That would indicate to me that it has stealth. Because there's no reason... The only reason to run four medium lasers instead of five is if you're running stealth with mask. Interesting. Okay. So, well, EMP have taken up position here over at Epsilon. And they've got three cap at the moment. I'm wondering what RJ if are going to do. Stimrog is looking for the flea. If he finds it, he will kill it. Uh, RJ is rotating left around this uh, tower. 
Yeah, I don't know if they want to take that engagement. I'm not sure that's the right engagement for them to try and take at the moment. I would like to see RJF take Theta and Kappa right now. Hold up a little bit. They're going to try and push this corner. Yeah, they're going to... Oh, execution Tomasek's just... Tomashek's going to... He's going to die. You, you don't want to push this corner, RJF. Please don't do it. Sailor found the flea in the back of Theta and killed him. Helmashek is getting very damaged. Uh, the blood asp is almost dead. Yeah. Black Lantern is taking on the night gear now. Yeah, RJF is just being enveloped at this point. They made us to pull off the uh, Chimera. Yeah, well, that was the ending. He was on a high spot. It was to be expected. I thought for a second it was a headshot. I had to double check. <laughs> Palmashek does go down. There goes the bounty hunter. The game's over. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't push that. It's just, it was just instant suicide to try and do what they, what RGF just did. You could not win ever doing that, unfortunately. Um, so I don't know, I would have liked for them to have moved away. They were obviously, they were lighter and they had some quicker mechs. It would have been nice for them to move away and and take, try and take a, an engagement under their own terms rather than push there. It's very dangerous. Taking a look at the uh, damage numbers at the end. Uh, EMP all around. Uh, for the most part, all their mechs out damaged the uh, RJF ones. It looks like Bloodass did manage to get a few hundred damage out before that Jenner backstabbed him. Still not enough team damage for my likings. But, as you said, the, the push around that corner was... Uh, that was doomed to fail. Once they saw those mechs, they should have backed off. Unfortunately. I'm a bit of an mm -hmm. RJF fan myself. I'm a fan of seeing close matches, I suppose is the best way to describe it for me. <laughs> they haven't been so far, so I'm hoping that RGF picks up their game a bit. Oh, this is Canyon, this is anyone's game. Alright, I'm going to double check on the stream, make sure everything's better. Oh, and everyone's making fun of they heard my son in the background, apparently. It does make pushing on this map quite difficult, if not done extremely You can hear my audio now. So I'm hoping that yeah. RJF have, have a more kiting, cap strap type of thing going on, but we'll have to see. EMP organizing software's only got six people in. Why, why does it say EMP have 12 points earned? <laughs> oh, um... Not sure. I am. Should be I've... three zero, no? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Unfortunately, I have not seen a lot of games with EMP on this map, so I have no idea if it's like something they get up to on here. Okay, so we're moving into the heaviest. Possible drop now. Maximum of 495 tons if you take max tonnage mix, which is, you know, generally in the in these sort of competitions where you don't have tonnage limits, except for the last drop in Blood League's regard. It does generally pay to take as much tonnage as possible. When you compare, you know, the amount of tonnage, something a mech that's really good, for example, like a Vulcan, has the amount of armor and firepower it has compared to a 55 tonner, it is, it is quite reduced. So there's 
and you've seen that for EMP. They've been taking a lot of their tonnage most drops. And RGF haven't. I mean, that is definitely not the you know, the sole reason as to the essential stompings that we've been watching, but it definitely hasn't hurt EMP by taking that much. Yeah. Tonnage matters. <laughs> I've, uh... I've had some my times where I've tried to go with lighter, faster decks, and... They can... I don't know, it just seems like tonnage usually wins out more than not. You know, especially when you're talking about one team being down 50 tons or, or whatever. That's that's substantial. Yeah, it does add up. Out of all the mechs being played in round three, I can see Grim Plexus being the main one with potential for a kiting type of cat trap, having the caps very far apart on that map. Yes. But again, that is that is the lightest drop, essentially. The maximum possible 420 tons. So, and because it's tonnage based as well, things like a Vulcan and Assassin are, are much more valuable in that fifth drop compared to the other drops. Now, when we do get the Grim, uh, what do you think? You think teams will go with uh, more faster light backs and stuff and just like a few traders? Like two or three, like two assaults and a heavy trader, then wolf pack the rest. Yeah, we'll have to see. Waiting for RJF to ready up now. They're currently sitting at 460 tons, but not, not sure if that'll be their final tonnage. But So they are still missing out on 35 tons, has been a bit of a theme for them today. And low tonnage. We've seen some of the same mechs from EMP coming out. So we've seen Stimrog in particular running the 6 SRM6 Gen 2C a few times. I have noticed that. Uh, Gen 2C has got one of the mobility upgrades, didn't it? Um, more importantly, it already had really good agility. It received... It received... It received um, arm armor. The arm armor rebalance, ah, as well as retaining the 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 armor it had on its torsos. So, a few years ago now, PGI decided for some unknown reason for the Jenna, the Stalker, and Cicada to reduce their arm armor, their absolute arm armor, and place that on the side torsos. And the Cauldron reverted that change because it didn't make sense in any in any way. And then it's um so, but without reducing its side torso armor, so it's been given side torso armor quirks and just it's had its armor quirks, its arm not its armor quirks, but its arm armor rather restored to the proper levels of a mech of its tonnage. Cauldron has been doing some excellent work. Shout out hey, to so everyone have... who's part of it. Um, and the community who's been helping support it. The uh, changes, as everyone knows, have been profound and um, have been a net good overall. Uh, more players are cropping up, matches are getting more balanced, uh, and it's just new content, you know? We went almost two years without anything. At least it feels like two years if it hasn't been two years. It was about that. Okay, so RJF have locked at 460 tons. They're all Bravo and Charlie currently. Alright. Which doesn't really make too much of a difference anymore, as Conquest and Kenyan Network basically all spawn in the same area. Looks like but both no teams are ready. Yep, 40 tons, a bit heavier again. Let's launch it and see what happens. And you said the max on this one's 495? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, so again, EMP have not completely, but used a lot of their tonnage.
Let's have a look. So we've got a Black Lena for Stellar, the same build as Solaris. We have an AC-10 2-hour PPC Vapor Eagle from Rickrom. Bowser, we have his ERPPC Small Pulse Laser Executioner. Jay-Z is in a Laser Vomit Timberwolf. The Red is in a 6 Medium Pulse Red, Wolfhound. Lizzy is in a 6 Ultra 2 Night Gaia. And Chimera is in a 2 Gorse, 3 ER Medium, medium Laser, 3 Large Pulse, Death Strike. From RJF's side, we got a, a Slepnir, um, 5 ER Large Laser Annie, uh, Timberwolf, uh, Vigil, Vulcan, Summoner, and K9. Uh, double checking Summoner, pretty sure it's Peeps. Uh, peeps and small lasers. Timberwolf, I think, is Peeps also. So, RGF is. No, Timberwolf RGF, is laser bomb. RGF is Timberwolf's laser bomb. Okay, we've had a nice spread out as they're looking to test some caps. Dored is scouting at the back of the map over at Epsilon. With Lizzie in the Ultra AC2 night gear, taking up trash dump. Rickrom moving a bit forward to get some good positions. We look like look like EMP is going to take Kappa. We've got Bowser backing up Saleth. They're looking to Saleth ignoring the Kappa. He was trying to get the Vulcan. The Vulcan noticed, so he ran away. Saleth is going to get Kappa. None of the teams have bothered to get Theta at this point. They haven't Kappa even looked at it. Enemy control. Well, that's probably smart. Theta's kind of... Uh, you send a light mech to it and the enemy team... Can you get some shots on it? It can go really badly, really quick for you. Oh, you see some training going on over here with the uh, Death Strike and Timberwolf. Yes, yeah, so RJF are making more of a move along Spine. It's currently only two caps to one, so it's not really getting close to the cap. It does look like they're just getting aggressive, an EMP sort of taking up a firing line. Seleth is getting Theta, but he is getting shot by the Veagle, RGF's Veagle. So he has to move away from that area. RGF is being aggressive again. Palmashek Pel Slepnir is almost cord CT already. And that Black Lantern is uh, looking to finish him off, it seems. No, he's just going to run by. And he's, got, he's open now. The Slepnir is open now. This could be an early pick Liz for EMP. And I think you'll find that this game's going to be over very soon. Yeah, Tim Wolf just had its side torso popped. Yep. RJF have basically lost. Game's over. Yeah, there goes the uh, Timberwolf. Slepnir should be dropping here very shortly. Yeah, Black Lantern. Uh, and then look here at, comes look at the surround. Look at the surround that's happened. RJF pushed themselves into the corner, let themselves get surrounded. Salif has just jumped in, Bowser's going to jump in, and now it's just kill time. Okay, game over. The only thing to do is RJF could try and get one kill, which can help in a tiebreaker. It looked like they're trying to leg Bowser's executioner. Oh, they got him. There it goes. Come on, RJF. One more kill. Let's get one more. Nah, uh, they got the red. That'll be it. The enemy has tapped enough GGs. resources. We failed. Yeah, that's twice uh EMP just uh it's twice RJF got aggressive EMP just fully enveloped him with just seconds after the push and that did not go well, unfortunately. No very low damage numbers for RGF. Slepnir and Timberwolf double ding, unfortunately. And yeah, it was just good reactions from EMP. They knew what was going on. They reacted to it. And RGF essentially took the bait and pushed in to a big firing line. Alright, I got 
the uh, score screen pulled up. Yeah, as you said, not a lot of not a lot of damage on J our JF side. Uh, EMP just clearly dominated that match. Uh, you got Kamir and Lizzie with two kills each. Um, Solo Solovini, I butchered that. I'm sorry, and whatever it takes, both managed to at least get a kill though. As you mentioned, kills will help in case any tiebreakers happen. Switching sides now. And then our last map is just double check, it's Grim Plexus. With our only tonnage drop of the tournament, 420 tons. Still abiding by the max two of any particular weight class. There we go. EMP has managed to rotate in a fair few pilots. I've noticed. They've been moving in and out. Their pilots, they've got quite a large roster. That's an understatement. It's a big roster. <laughs> uh, I think CDU has a beat. The... I have to double check that to confirm, but at one point, I know CDU was, bad, was going to try to put 100 pilots on a roster. So they might have them beat. Oh. Right. Well, these Grim teams get, well, they get ready and we'll switch back over to the map strap. Um, mm -hmm. you're talking about the outside caps. Uh, this is a huge map. Uh, it, it's it's a lot of ground to cover, especially if you're trying to if you try to play it safe and go on the outside of the map. That's you're talking kilometers of distance to travel between two cap points. Yeah. This can be a typical sort of hold position. You can hold two caps on either side of the map and potentially and have easy access to a back cap if you're if the enemy team, for example, you know, team two decides to sit on this hill with Theta and Kappa. They do have a line to most of Sigma, but all, not all of it. And this is a very large distance between Sigma and Kappa to hold. Whereas if you're taking up positions more around here, if you have control of Theta, there are many spots in which to prevent Theta being capped. And you have more coverage to stop or at least notice if there's a Gamma cap. It'll be interesting to see whether you know one team goes for a full cap strat, whether one team goes for a kill strat, or if RGF just tries to push again as they've done the last few matches. Now, I think it was CDU just earlier, just uh, when they did their game against Temp, they tried these three caps, um, the, but which I think uh, in a three cap scenario, it's Sigma, Gamma, Kappa. And it looks like they try to play for the three caps, uh, as if we were doing three cap conquest. Um, I mean, you can do that because there are spots here at the back of Fox Ten Golf Ten that can see both Gamma and Sigma, um, and you can have mechs up here holding Sigma. But one of the issues with trying to do something like that is you're typically playing in this region of the map and. You're, you've pushed yourself into a corner, and having map control is quite important in comp, especially high-level comp. So if you saw one team do that, the correct response from the other team would be just to continually squeeze them past this ridge line, right? So you could end up with the entire team stuck in this quadrant, which should be a death sentence if the opposing team plays correctly. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what tempted. Because uh, eventually CDU had to push out this way, and then they just started dropping like flies to an already prepared firing line. Yeah, that I means it's a bit hard to draw comparisons between DV and DV, though. Well, I'm going to try. You're all potatoes <laughs> to me. <laughs> just different varieties. Well, 
Well, RJ is still not ready yet. Almost ready, though. And they must be running out of time. But they're at 420 tons, so it looks like they're going to finally play all their tonnage. Teams have five minutes to ready up. Plenty of time. I haven't been paying attention, that's <laughs> not really our concern anyway. The teams can sort it out for themselves. You'd expect here that almost all the time in drop five that would end up being 420 tons. Maybe 415, but you'd, you'd find for a tonnage based drop that most teams will figure out a way to use most of it up. Very true. Just one mech in Charlie, Bowser. Four mechs in Bravo, which is the middle cap. And then two in Alpha. So it'll be interesting to see whether BMP from this spawn they've locked in decide whether they, they want to push Theta and control Theta, Epsi. If they're going to make a move on Kappa. Presumably Stimrog will be going to Gamma to back cap it. We'll have to see when we drop him. I mean, from Bravo spawn, it's the middle spawn, so they could go either way if they want to, or they could just jump straight over towards Theta. Now Jeff taking a little bit of time, deciding what they want to do. Currently got three mechs in Alpha, which would indicate they're going to a bit of weight at Kappa. Four mechs now at Kappa. So one strategy I've seen teams employ in this is to full stack Kappa. It's just so you have it completely and then move across the map while you have some mess can take Theta and one get Sigma. Looks like they're moving again though. They've moved to Bravo Charlie now. So completely ignoring Kappa. Interesting. Well it's kinda out in Zimbabwe, you can probably it's... you don't need it. <laughs> need it, but the team... if a team gets Kappa uncontested and has it, it's a huge amount of tickets that it builds up over the course of a match. That's true. That's very true. Ooh, RJF's almost ready. Exciting! Last match of the... of the series. Or last draft of the match. Alright, they are the locked. The locked, so let's go. Okay, let's see, EMP, Stimrog has a Phoenix Hawk 1k, the Red has a Wolfhound 2, Rickrom has a Beagle, Bowser in an Executioner, Lizzie in a Warhammer 6R, Chimera in an Annihilator 2a, and Celis in a Flea. Over on RGF side, we got a Linebacker, Cyrus, Gargoyle, Beagle, Summoner, Wolfhound, and a Marauder 2c. Uh... That's a lot of fast mechs. Are they going for a capping game? Or just a hard rush? Because the rushes have not been working for them the last few games. Let's see if it works Let's for them this look. time. Medium Pulse Osiris and Wolfhound for RJF. We have gamma. Enemy laser have Vomit Sigma. Linebacker. Oh, it's got Large Pulse in our med, so it's a mix. Yeah, Laser Vomit. Yeah, it looks like yeah, a lot PPC of Laser Stamina, Vomit. Yeah, PPC Stamina, Laser Vomit, Marauder 2C. 
laser vomit, gargoyle, and a large pulse vapor eagle. So yeah, they're going for more of a mid-range trading sort. Flea doing his little capping dance on uh, Theta. Rickrom is in his AC-10 to our peeps vehicle again. Lizzie and Chimera both are light gorse ERPPC builds. The Red's in his MPL Wolfhound. Stimrog is in a very fast moving small pulse Phoenix Hawk with one flamer. So neither team's opting to go to Kappa. RJF taking Sigma and now they're getting Epsi. Bit of a bit of Fire coming in, our PPC fire coming in, but not too much. Just getting a bit of chip damage at the moment. Misplaced strike. Strike on Rick Rom, will he notice it? Looks like he has. Command confirming that we have possession of Kappa. Veals get shot on the Wolfhound over there. Wolfhound's backing off. And Lizzie and Chimera are just sitting way back here using the range of the light gorse to pick away at RJF who can't really respond to them with their drop deck. So it's getting chip damage in. RJF have bunched up and EMP have just taken three cap and they're preparing to receive with a wide open Bowser's moving to the top. Hamburger Hill up here. Come here and Lizzie sort of being trying to reposition them. They're quite slow. But they've got Dered and Rickrom and their flanks guarding them. Stimrog is still saying at Gamma Cap. So he's either going to move in now to try and hit the back of their push or he'll back cap, depending on what they say. RJF again pushing in straight yeah. through the middle and making a lot of fire. Mark 2C is being eaten alive. Looks like Bowser's going to be ganked. I can't, he won't be able to get away from that, I don't think. Sailth is coming to help him. But these mechs should be able to kill Bowser. They're going for his legs again. Yeah, they might actually yeah, be able to him. keep Bowser from getting the back shots that he wants into this push. Cyrus goes down. That's not good. Uh, yeah, well, the no Cyrus. Bowser's cooking himself. Yep, cooked himself. Slave Labor stopping the trade with the Annie and then uh, died for it while the other two guys got in the cover, but uh, looks like the Gargoyle went down too. Summoners getting behind the... Uh, the fuel tanks. Phoenix Hawk is right into his butt. Uh, that Vigil is about to drop. Well, they got the they got the two assaults, but it wasn't enough. And Lizzie's too fresh. The Red's too fresh. Steamrock's too fresh. The Salif is fresh as well, so it's all over. It's clean up time now. That'll be that. GGs do not think the, in, the uh, pushes went in their favor at all. That might need to be a rethink at the end. But it was still good fights. Um, take a look at the damage numbers here. Live Labor getting double deed again, and a few of the other mechs, not me, score over 200. Another pretty one sided match. Yeah, yeah I mean. There, there wasn't a lot of complexity to RGF's strats, which is um, a bit disappointing, if I'm going to be honest. They they did a lot of push strats, um, but I, th I thought they could have been a bit more intelligent about how they did them and where they pushed. Going straight over the top like that in plain view of a team that's set up with long-range mechs to receive and knows what you're going to do is, is not going to work well at this level. Now... I will say this, uh, as someone who mastered NSRing in Div C last year, uh, those pushes felt very, very familiar, like Div C pushes. Now, I'm not trying to bag them at all, but as you mentioned, the pushing out in the open, um, just full W sending it. Uh, I don't think it worked out well for them, especially there in Grim. Um, once their push got into what I would consider the clan MPL range for them, their their push forward just completely stopped. 
the forward momentum did, and then Slave Labor dropped, the Gargoyle dropped shortly after he did, and it was just a clean up at that point. Um, as you mentioned, oh, I think the 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 gank the gank on Bowser worked well, but I didn't feel like their main team just needed to push over the top at the same time. The way Bowser was positioned, I mean, he's an executioner, so it's always a great mech to escape sort of things. But they might have been able to get get a sneaky gank on him um, with just the lights pushing around the the dead side of the mountain away from the rest of the MP team. But they pushed with the main team and they got damaged quite a bit as a result. Yeah. Yep. So very conclusive wins from EMP. Yeah, five out. Yep, don't have much more to say. Yeah, I think appreciate you coming and casting this with me. Uh chat, uh viewers, I apologize that the first couple of drops were a little you couldn't hear Crass's sweet melodious voice. Uh that was entirely my bad. But that is permanently fixed now. That mistake will never happen again. Um I appreciate you all watching. Crass, I appreciate you coming and helping me do this cast and giving your uh, Div A insight, which definitely is much appreciated. Um, you got anything else to add before uh, I send this off? Oh. Oh, thanks, everyone, for watching, and keep an eye on. There might be some more matches cast this weekend. Yeah. Bye-bye. See you, guys.